Uh, we'll move on over to the tip of the week. And I really like this tip of the week. Normally we'll showcase a specific feature of the platform and really how to press it and leverage it to grow your community or uh, utilize it to its maximum capabilities. In this tip of the week, David and I were talking earlier this week and we wanted to talk about business growth. We wanted to take a step away from working in the website on the features and talk about how to grow your membership business. So if, David, if it's okay with you, I'd like to pass over the reins and you can kind of take us through this pretty, pretty cool tip of the week we have here today. Absolutely. As Jason mentioned, a little bit more of an abstract uh, presentation this week. One that I think will certainly be helpful for everybody watching out there, whether your uh, membership or directory site is brand new, maybe you haven't even started it yet, or if it's been around for a while, hopefully this will give you a, a little bit of a different perspective on some ways that you can go about uh, improving your website and how it's managed and everything. So a good place to start, I think, uh, would be to identify how many businesses actually make it long term and why, or at least one of the reasons why many of them uh, don't actually last too long. So two thirds of businesses make it two years, but then after just five years, only half of the businesses are able to stick around. And then five years later, total of 10 years, less than a third of businesses are able to make it that long. One of the common reasons for this is because a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, especially if uh, they're trying to do everything all on their own, it's very easy to be consumed by the day-to-day -day operations, the monotony of all the daily tasks that come with managing the new business, especially with a membership community or directory website. There's a lot of different things to manage. There's a lot of balls to be juggling. Uh, and so eventually the lack of time that's invested into actually growing the business because all the time is going into just making sure that all the gears keep turning that can over time eventually lead to stagnation of the business of the the community uh, and then eventually even decay of it and that's the last thing we want we want to make sure that our business is one of those 30 percent uh, that makes it 10 years and longer. So hopefully some of the topics and the items that we touch on here will uh, help prolong the life of your business. And uh, I think that's another thing to think about here. A lot of people when starting a, a membership community or a directory website, it doesn't hit them initially that what they're really doing is starting a business. And I think that's a mindset that a lot of website owners uh, kind of need to grasp onto uh, because that's what's going to ensure the longevity of uh, not just the project, but the business itself. You know, we've talked about in the past getting off the hamster wheel. You know, it's important to work on day-to-day -day tasks, jobs, and requirements for, for your business online or, or even uh, brick and mortar. Uh, but also it's important to get off that hamster wheel, take a step back and plan, make a roadmap or plan on how you're going to sustain the business or grow the business uh, and more. Uh, so this is what we're going to co uh, cover in this week's tip of the week. Spot on. And so a common phrase, many of you might have heard of this before. We want to make sure we're not just working in the business. We want to make sure that we're also working on our business. So what's the difference working in versus working on the business? Working in the business is the execution and the management of a job, those day-to-day -day tasks, things that do need to get done. There's no way the business can continue on if these daily tasks aren't being completed by somebody, but we do want to set some time aside to work on the business, the, the big picture sort of stuff, the vision and strategy. You know, in a large organization, these are mostly the tasks that those C-suite executives, you know, the, the chief operations officer, you know, they're not necessarily going to be on the ground doing the day-to-day -day tasks that need to get done. They might be, be spending more time thinking about how operations can be made more efficiently, what things can be done differently, what new things could the business be doing to improve, what things can be stripped away that aren't necessary. So even if you're just on your own and you're a solopreneur, we'll get into this more in the next couple slides. 
Uh, but we do still want to set some time aside to focus on the big picture sort of stuff. Because without that, if, if we're so narrowly focused on the day in, the day out, we can end up losing sight of that big panoramic view, uh, the big picture of what it actually takes to continue to grow our business and continue moving it down the line. And I'd say that, you know, this is probably the most important thing. You know, I can say even, I can even speak on when we were, you know, creating brilliant directories over the last 10 years, um, especially when you're, when you're a bit younger and you have a lot of fire in your heart, you can pull all nighters and you're going to do every job on the list because you're pretty much working with either a small team or uh, really by yourself. And as, as, as we get a bit older, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore. And time management is really what this tip of the week is about is prioritizing and also diversifying the type of tasks you're working on uh, for the business. So this is really about time management and learning how to balance your day-to-day, week-to-week, and month-to-month priorities in the business and on the business. And so we'll just continue moving on here with that. Yeah, it's almost entirely about time management. And uh, it's important to identify what we're spending our time on. So part of that goes into what are actually some of those tasks that encompass working in our business, those daily type things that need to happen, uh, but can take time away from some of the big picture things. So this depends largely on the type of business, you know, a membership or directory website, they're going to have much different daily tasks than any other sort of business. And then it also depends, you know, what additional services or features you're providing to your members. But some of the basics here, you know, initially building out our website, Jason mentioned getting stuck on the hamster wheel. This is something we focused on a lot in uh, a lot of the early webinars was uh, helping people kind of stay focused on the big picture, not getting caught up in the minutia of the tiny, you know, minuscule features of the website that really aren't that important. What's most important is the big picture, getting people in the door. And then over time, we can make some of those smaller changes to the website. Delivering your service, you know, whether that's the website or the community itself, or if you're providing additional services to your members, whether part of the membership or at an additional cost, those are daily tasks that need to uh, get done. The daily administrative work, like answering emails, customer service, uh, bringing on new members, uh, everything like this, marketing and social media, getting the word out about your website, trying to continue to grow your, uh, your member community. These are all such important tasks that do need to get done, but they take a lot of time. And so uh, in a couple slides here, we'll talk about some time management tips, things you can do to hopefully free up just a little bit of time so you can spend a little bit extra time focusing and thinking about some of the big picture things so that you have a better idea of where you want to steer your ship. And just one more note about working in the business. It's all about just getting the ball rolling. I, I don't know if there's an exact rule for it, but I really like to take things to 80% you know, or 75% because perfection doesn't exist. Let's talk about a website's homepage, for example. One, it's going to be ever-changing as time goes by. But I've seen and I can see how wanting to continuously work on your website's homepage and sometimes using that as, as an excuse, if we're being real with ourselves, as an excuse not to work on probably some more important parts of the business, you'll just keep continuing to change your storefront. Imagine you saw a shop owner on the street and every day they were changing their window dressings of what people could see from the street. That really doesn't make sense. So when you're working in your business, you know, even when it comes to answering emails, you know, you have email templates, some things are going to be a little bit automated or systematic. Um, Get things to about 80% and then just let it be for a period of time. Let it sit let it marinate, let it tell you later what needs to be changed. Um, Because obsessing over one part of your business, that's really getting stuck on the hamster wheel. And that's what really hinders growth, uh, is is getting stuck, uh, being hung on one specific part of uh, the business or the website. So just keep that in mind also, um, as that that is what working in the business is. And we wanna get out of that at certain points. 
yeah, perfection is the enemy of progress, I think is how the saying goes. Uh, and it certainly holds true. Um, and some of those big picture tasks that come with working on your business, those are, you know, kind of you know, the standard things that might come to mind, strategic planning, goal setting. We want to know what we're striving to achieve. Otherwise, we're kind of just flailing about in the day to day research and development. Maybe there's new tools or uh, new processes that we can implement into our day to day tasks to make things more efficient, free up a little bit of time. Learning and education. If we're all on our own, kind of wearing all the hats here, it can be very difficult uh, to find enough time to get everything done that needs to get done. But if you can spend some time uh, learning more about a certain thing, you know, maybe you don't know a whole lot about marketing or about online ads, but you're confident that that can help you grow your business. If you're spending so much time on those daily tasks and you don't have enough time uh, to learn about online ads or your business isn't growing enough so you don't have the resources to outsource digital ad creation or ad management you know we want to find ways to make more time so that uh, we can better educate ourselves and so that maybe there's some other tasks that we might actually find time to be able to take on that can then continue to grow the business finding new partnerships you know if you can't do everything on your own maybe you can kind of piggyback off of other like-minded people, whether they're in your industry or maybe they're in a supplemental industry. Speaking with mentors, the Facebook group, uh, the Brilliant Directories Facebook group has been a tremendous resource, especially for uh, new membership and directory website owners, You know, hearing firsthand what works, what doesn't work, what people have wasted a lot of time doing because they thought it would be beneficial, uh, what people have done to actually kind of, you know, skyrocket their success and, and totally change the trajectory of their website. You know, learning from people who have kind of been through all of this before, that's an a invaluable resource. And also one more thing on working on your business. It's not just to grow your business, but it's to create efficiencies. Let's go back to the setting up advertisements for your company and the learning and education if you can figure out how to spend less but get more traffic to your site, quality traffic, uh, you've just created an efficiency, an, an efficiency, not an inefficiency, um, and that's going to save you money and bring more traffic to your site, and that just helped your business. Um, you're going to keep costs down, et cetera, et cetera. So finding, and then efficiencies are also like uh, creating, setting up auto reply emails and things like that, um, or some type of a support center to support your members in an automated fashion, obviously like a documentation uh, center um, if, if your site warrants that or your business warrants that. So I like to also think of working on your business, not just growing, but finding efficiencies that help you operate more lean and more, yeah, more efficiently as it says. So uh, think of that when you're think when you're working on your business as well. Yeah, and sometimes those daily tasks can play into working on your business. You know, even if you need to spend some more time putting in place some of those efficiencies, that could free up time in the future. Uh, so you're kind of investing in your future self in, in that point. So really the main thing here, aside from healthy time management, is balance and perspective. It's not good to only focus on working in your business because then it might not make it, you know, two, five, 10 years down the road, but it's also not good to only focus on your business because then you don't really know what's going on within. So working in your business does have its positives. It allows you to understand who your customers actually are and what they truly want. It allows you to identify what makes for happy customers and what makes for unhappy customers. If you know we're kind of just too busy, too focused on the big picture, we might think we know what our members want, but if we're not interacting with them on a regular basis, you know something that we think they want, they might totally be disregarding, or it might actually be hurting their experience rather than helping it. Working in the business also ensures that we're providing customers with top tier service making sure our users, our customers, our members are as happy as possible. That's one of the easiest ways to make sure we're standing out from any of our competitors and to make sure that we're leaving a lasting positive impression on our members. 
It also allows you just in general to keep a finger on the pulse of the business as a whole. It allows you again to identify what's working, what's not working, what could be improved you know, on those daily tasks, what could be made more efficient, what things do we maybe not need? What things could we take out that you know we might not even need to spend any time on? So even though at first you may need to work a lot in your business, over time, here's a metaphor for you. It's difficult to steer the ship when you're busy being a firefighter. You know, being a firefighter, especially if you're doing it all on your own and you're just starting out, it's necessary, but eventually we want to dedicate some time to being able to steer the ship. And on the flip side, working on the business, it allows us, as we mentioned, to develop a clear vision for the business, where we actually want it to go. If we're just going through the motions day in and day out, then there's nothing to say that external factors might not come along and affect our trajectory, and we might not even know it. It also allows you to invest in yourself, uh, you know, to learn what's working, what's not working, to learn about efficiencies that can be put in place, to learn about new strategies that you could be implementing. Because if we ourselves are not growing as individuals, then the business itself also isn't going to grow. Working on the business also allows you to kind of take a step back, take a breath, reevaluate the product or any additional services that we may be providing to our customers, to our members. If, again, we're just kind of focusing on the day in, the day out, just trying to get all the daily tasks done, then you know trends might be changing. We might, might not notice that. And we might at that point not have the opportunity to kind of take a second look with fresh eyes and you know an open mind and actually kind of think to ourselves, okay, if I'm coming to my website, to my community for the very first time, is the messaging still connecting? Is it still resonating with me? Uh, the features or the services that are being offered, are these things still important? Uh, so it's important to periodically take a step back, come in with an open mind and fresh eyes and see if the product and the additional services that we're offering are still valuable to our target audience. And kind of just overall consistently evaluating our performance. I don't know how accurate this, uh, this statistic is, but the point still holds true. 80% of results come from 20% of activity. But if we don't have the time to take a step back and kind of evaluate everything, then how will we ever know what that 20% of efficient activity or beneficial activity actually is? Because once we can identify that, we can put even more resources into what we know is working and put less resources into what we have found out really isn't doing a whole lot for us, isn't paying any dividends. Yeah, I think that last point is, is super important. Uh, like, I, like I was mentioning, like sometimes you just gotta put something out there and just let it be and, and, and don't, uh, don't kill yourself over it. Uh, get some data, see how it performs, and then review it and see if it's working or not working, if it needs to be improved or you did a great job on the first shot, um, or what can be added to it. Uh, if you're constantly working on something, you're not giving it a chance to breathe on its own and to give you any data of, of how it's performing uh, on its own legs. So letting something uh, you know, ride out for a period of time, just get it to a good enough point, and, and then you can review it in a month or so, or a few weeks, or whenever you have the time to come back to it. But in that time that you took a break from it, you were growing another part of your business and making something else awesome. Uh, and that's what we should always be doing is shifting from task to task, especially solopreneurs or, or smaller teams, shifting from task to task and just pumping out a few snip, a, a few things of, uh, of awesomeness uh, every now and then, and then circling back to the beginning and then doing it all over again. Yeah. And kind of in summary here, we've kind of touched on all of these points already, but again, as solopreneurs, which the majority of us out there are, even if it's just you on your own launching or managing your membership website or your directory website, maybe you are doing it just on the side. Maybe you still have a full-time job. So now you're really thinking, oh man, how do I have enough time to kind of focus on the daily tasks, but also dedicate some time to thinking about where I want this to go, what's working, what's not working, uh, everything like that. So I think a decent rule of thumb 
that could probably be followed for the majority of us out there is to try to spend just 15, 20% of the time that you're currently spending on your daily tasks, shift that over to working on the business, thinking more about the big picture uh, sort of stuff. You know, if you're spending just, even if it's only an hour a day working on your community and your website, maybe you can dedicate, you know, 10, 15 minutes of that time to uh, looking for a new people to network and connect with, new ways to automate certain tasks, or even prepare ahead of time. If you're spending a lot of time on content creation, maybe that's something that you can outsource. You know, websites like Fiverr and Upwork and Freelancer, they make it so easy and also pretty cheap now to outsource a lot of mundane tasks like that. Maybe that's an option. Or if you don't want to outsource something like content creation, maybe you can spend an you know, an hour on a weekend, putting together just a couple short articles that you can then share throughout the week. And then you can spend that time during the week focusing on more of the big picture stuff. You can also, again, periodically, maybe once every two weeks, once a month, take a step back, come into your website or your community with fresh eyes and an open mind and actually look for something wrong with your business or your website. Actually, intentionally try to find something wrong uh, that you can write. Now, again, you don't want to get caught up in everything and get stuck back on the hamster wheel. But again, maybe trends are changing that you didn't necessarily notice before. And now that you're taking a step back, you can identify and maybe you can change some of the messaging or the verbiage on your website to better communicate with uh, maybe new things that your members or your target audience are, you know, have told you that, that they're wanting. Uh, you can also... Just directly ask your customers or your members, in this case, uh, if they have any ideas for improvements. Uh, if you think a certain feature or service that you're offering is paramount, you can ask them, do you really think what we're offering here, this specific feature, is beneficial? You might be surprised. Maybe it's not, and then you can spend less time focusing on that, that specific feature or service and put more time, invest more energy into uh, providing other things uh, that uh, that might help grow your community better than that thing that you thought would and actually isn't. Uh, you can also find ways to further differentiate your, your business or your community, your website from competitors. Instead of just trying to just directly compete with them, if you can't compete with them on features, for example, maybe you can compete with them on the customer service or the community aspect. You know, maybe uh, you can try to energize your community a little bit more, make it friendlier, more inviting, make it something that people actually want to join on a service side, in addition to just the product itself, you know, the website itself and the features that you're providing. And lastly, one other option we mentioned is to network with other uh, professionals, whether it's in your industry or in a supplementary industry, so that you can kind of act as a springboard off of each other. Because especially if you're just doing this all on your own, again, it can be really hard to find the time and the energy to do it all on your own. Uh, and there's probably other people thinking the same thing, again, whether it's in your industry or another. Uh, and maybe there's ways uh, to uh, work together uh, that would be mutually beneficial for both of you. So you know, if you can spend 10 minutes a week trying to look for people or opportunities like that, maybe that would be a good use of some of that extra time. This is an amazing list, David. Thank you for putting this together. The replay for this will be available. Uh, so if you want to come back and take a look at some of these slides, we went a little quick. Hopefully we didn't belabor the point of what we're trying to uh, make here. Um, but thank you for that, David. So, oh, even this tip of the week was taking a step back from the features and things like that and thinking about the business itself or the community itself and how we as website owners and membership website owners uh, can take a step back and figure out how we're going to tick the needle forward uh, to, to grow the community or find efficiencies, I think was a, was a key point there as well.